good morning and welcome back to our 160th Bible study. At the moment we're looking at those books in the Old Testament which try to soften or to deepen our understanding of the nature of God and uh, and the and a different way of looking at the problems of obeying the law and being good people living a good life. We are now embarking on our study of the book of Job. This is a very profound book. It, uh, it goes a long way to help us to understand that it's not just about keeping the rules. We begin the book of Job by looking at Job chapter 1 verses 1 to 12. And we see the origins of the character we know as Satan. I'll turn you around and introduce you to Job. In Uzland there lived a man called Job, who was a faithful worshipper, well behaved, careful not to put a foot wrong. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, a thousand cattle, and five hundred donkeys, and a large retinue of servants. He was the richest person in the East. His sons took it in turns to host a feast for the whole family. The morning after each feast, Job would gallop early to offer a sacrifice for each of his children to keep them pure. He wanted to make atonement in case any of them had accidentally insulted God. Meanwhile, that day arrived when the heavenly court assembled before Yahweh, and the accuser was amongst their number. Yahweh asked him, What have you been up to? I've been here and there on earth, roaming around, he replied. Then, Yahweh said, You will have noticed my servant Job. He's faithful and good, there's no one better. He honours me and is careful not to do anything wrong. The accuser replied, uh, Would he worship you if he didn't benefit from it? You've protected him and his family and his property. Everything he does you bless, <clears throat> and you've given him enough livestock to fill the country. Suppose you were to take it all away. He would look you in the face and curse you. Let's see, Yahweh said to the accuser. All he has is in your power. Just don't hurt Job himself. Satan left. This book was written after the Babylonian exile. And uh, it was the wisdom school that needed to rehabilitate itself at that time. For the majority of the people of Israel after the Babylonian exile, it was a relief to get back to the kind of more normality they imagined life had been like before. Their simple faith made certain unfortunate assumptions, <clears throat> such as that the reward for good behaviour would be health, peace and prosperity in this life, and the punishment for bad behaviour would also be in this life, and come in a similar form, disaster, poverty, disease, death. The point of the story of Job is to question such a simplistic approach, and to criticise those who unthinkingly judged all sick and poor people for their sinfulness trying to say to them, what must you have done wrong to deserve this fate? This imaginative work, the book of Job, is a plea from the surviving scholars of wisdom philosophy, who had, before, been criticised by prophets in the wake of the Babylonian triumph for not foreseeing it coming. It gave these scholars of wisdom an opportunity to re-establish themselves as a credible teaching school. Here we see the technique of the dialogue used, to think seriously 
about the problem of undeserved suffering and pain, and to look more deeply into the nature of God. The dialogue was to be a long-lasting teaching technique used by philosophers and early scientists from nearly 600 BC to the 18th century AD. Using the technique of question and answer, the writers use the ignorance of their imagined interlocutors to explain new ideas to their readers. These opening verses set up for us a scenario set in unidentifiable territory in the distant past from before the establishment of a priesthood or a temple. We are given a picture of a pious and well-off landowner living the good life. And in the heavens, we meet for the first time the figure that later would develop into the devil. He's, here he is, a cross between a, a police officer and the Crown Prosecution Service. His name, Satan, means accuser. And that's what I've called him here, to save any confusion. This is not the beast of the apocalypse, not yet. Most of the book of Job, most of it, is um, taken up with the dialogues. On one side of the argument, we have an innocent, beleaguered Job. And on the other side, those he is arguing with. First his three friends, and then at the end, God himself. It takes the first two chapters to set up the background of the dialogues. In the rest of chapter one, we see Job's children killed in a rogue storm and his wealth removed from him by robbers and raiders. Seeing his house blown down in a storm, his most quoted words are, With nothing was I born, and with nothing I shall die. Yahweh gave, and now he has taken it all away. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. In spite of it all, the accuser has failed to get Job to curse God to his face. So in chapter 2, once again the heavenly court is assembled, and this time God um, allowed the accuser to embark on an attack on Job's person, anything short of death. Job broke out in sores, which he scraped with a piece of broken pottery. His wife, agreeing with the accuser, advised him to curse God and die. This led to Job's second quotable answer. What nonsense, he says. God sends something good and we enjoy it? Why then should we moan when he sends us trouble? At which point his friends, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar, turn up, ostensibly to offer him sympathy, but it turns out all they could do was mourn. They sat with him for a week before Job himself broke the silence with a lament, which we will read tomorrow. I'll see you then.